decades, there have been calls for mutual aid, for during the George Floyd riot, and for funeral coverage for an officer who died in the line of duty. In San Jose, Marty Schaefer, KCBS. One person died and four others were wounded in shootings in Oakland on Friday. Uh, the fatal shooting was reported about 8.45 p.m. on International Boulevard. Officers found a man and woman, both Oakland residents, with gunshot wounds. The man died at the scene and the woman was taken to the hospital in stable condition. About 15 minutes later, two more Oakland residents were wounded in the 1900 block of 42nd Avenue. Officers there were alerted to the shooting by the city's gunshot detection system, according to the police. Officers located a man and a woman with shooting injuries. According to a preliminary police investigation, the victims were shot after they interrupted someone trying to steal a catalytic converter. That pair was taken to the hospital and were in stable condition. In a surprise turn, the Santa Clara County Sheriff, Lori Smith, has announced her immediate retirement. This comes as she awaits a verdict in her civil corruption trial. KCBS's Keith Minconi has more. Smith's resignation came in the form of a one-sentence letter sent to the county's Board of Supervisors. And it takes effect immediately under Sheriff Ken Binder will take over as acting sheriff. Smith has been facing intense pressure amid an ongoing civil corruption trial over accusations involving jail mismanagement and a bribery scandal. Smith has steadfastly denied the accusations, claiming that they're politically motivated. And she certainly has her share of political opponents, many of whom are now welcoming the news. More than a year ago, I publicly called for Sheriff Lloyd Smith to resign, and she has belatedly heeded that call. San Jose Mayor Sam Licardo. There remains for the county to rebuild the trouble department better address many long-neglected issues, particularly regarding jail oversight. Smith did not provide an explanation for her resignation. Meantime, the jury deliberations in her trial are ongoing. The guilty verdict would be a ban for Smith from seeking public office again. Keith Manconi, KCBS. Coming up on KCBS, I'm Alice Wirtz. What the Twitter takeover means for truth-tellers. News time 12:15 in baseball. Game three of the World Series was rained out last night, Philadelphia, and they're going to try again tonight. Here's Ted Ramey in this story. Roughly halfway into the NFL season, the 49ers currently sit at four wins and four losses, entering the bye week and hopefully getting healthy. 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan spoke with the media, giving his assessment on where he sees the team. Yeah, I think everything you look at, whether it's at the beginning of the year, or during the year, towards the end, you just want a chance to into the tournament and was where we stand now. I still feel we have a very good chance of that. So we've got to play good football here going forward. The answer you want most with your team is that you're getting better as the year goes. And that's what he believes he sees. Just all around in all three phases, probably had our best game um, as a team yesterday. And I think that was real good timing for it. I think we need this bye week. We need to rest up a little bit and hopefully get some guys back. You know, right when we get it going a little bit, it is always tough to take some time off. But I do think we need it for our help stuff. I'm going to come back in here and have a good Monday, good Tuesday before we get going with the game plan next Wednesday. 49ers return to action on the 13th of November, hosting the Chargers on Sunday Night Football from Levi's Stadium. Over to the NBA, the 76ers are being dot a second-round pick in the upcoming 2023 draft and a second-round pick in the 2024 draft as punishment for beginning the free agent discussion before the allotted timeline that's according to an NBA investigation. And the Warriors, coming off of two straight losses over the weekend, were off on Monday and return to action on Tuesday afternoon in Miami, taking on the Heat. At the sports desk, generating KCBS. I'm Omar Alves. Lawyers don't have a lot of business, they have law practice. Because they take a lot of practice to be a good lawyer. Believe me, we have a lot of practice. Some people assume we have this law at the small law firm. Because my father and I do all that. But we're not a small law firm at all. We have a lot of lawyers in a lot of offices all over California. And I personally chose each lawyer because they are the right kind of lawyer. They care deeply about you and they can win your case in court. They don't need any more practice. They've been practicing a long time. Now the law has successfully resolved thousands of personal injury cases in California and collected hundreds of millions of dollars for our clients. We do the right thing in the right way at the right time. Are you suffering because something wrong happened to you? Let us do the right thing for you. Our only compensation is the percentage of what we win for you. We are Habit Law. Call us at 1-800-H-A-B-B-A-N-L-A-W-T-O-R. We are just days away from the midterms, and there's no doubt the issues in our local elections have far-reaching implications for the Bay Area. We're breaking those issues down on The Homestretch, Odyssey's new original podcast. I'm KCBS political reporter Doug Sommer. Subscribe to The Homestretch for a 15-minute download on the most pressing issues on this year's ballot. Download the Odyssey.
Odyssey app and follow KCBS and listen to the home stretch on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. KCBS News Time 1218. We'll look at your uh, six day forecast. A couple of chances for rain coming up after we check in with Carolyn Burns. And we head back to uh, San Francisco where on the Central Freeway we had this earlier crash southbound 101. It's on that connector to that continues on to uh, 101 towards the peninsula there. It was two cars blocking a lane and they did have somebody was hurt. Well, it looks like it's getting close to getting cleared because right now I'm seeing a uh, backup that's just stretching to Potrero Avenue. Hopefully this should be getting out of there fairly quickly. Also now in the Vallejo area, eastbound 80, uh, just after Georgia Street, apparently we have a, a two-car crash. Uh, the reports say it's blocking that left-hand lane and that there may be debris in all of the lanes there. CHP is there. If anybody's happening to drive by, can always give us a call at 415-391-KCBS. And now in San Jose, northbound 280, just before 10th Street. This is where we have a, a car that may have hit the center divide. Injuries might be involved because an ambulance is on the way as well. Your next traffic update is at 1228 on the traffic leader, KCBS. Thank you, Carolyn. It looks like cloudy this morning. It's pretty mild temperatures, lows in the, the 50s, and then the rain will start in the North Bay after 6 a.m. And moving south, windy and rainy across much of the Bay Area today. The highs just in the upper 50s, and then the Wednesday through the weekend, partly cloudy. Still ch chance of scattered showers and colder temperatures, especially overnight. Highest mid to upper 50s at the coast, low 60s by the bay and inland. And then there's another front in the forecast out a little bit, bringing rain Sunday into Monday. It's going to be sun Saturday night into Sunday, but it looks like bear and pack moved into Sunday into Monday. So slow moving. Traffic and weather together on the 8th on All News 106.9 and AM 740 KCBS. KCBS News Time 12.20. Changes at Twitter. KCBS is talking to industry observers about what's going on since Elon Musk took over and what can be expected in the future. Here's KCBS's Jim Tick. The biggest real change at Twitter so far, kicking out leadership. Everything else so far has been things that have just been kind of floated as possible ideas. And in fact, the biggest change we've seen is that there is actually a slowdown on any discussion of changes to content moderation policy. Joshua Tucker, New York University co-director, NYU Center for Social Media and Politics, says it's important not to overreact to the musings of the man who calls himself Chief Tweet. We've seen this with Musk in the past. We saw this a lot where the float idea that maybe is not completely thought out and then he'll back off of that idea. So that's why I was saying I think we want to take these things, you know, one step at a time. And about all the social media blather about leaving Twitter, finding an alternative. For now, I, I, I would be skeptical that many of these people who say they're leaving are actually going to end up leaving. Because there really isn't an alternative. Jim Taylor, KCBS. As news of Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter hits the feed, uh, many users report accounts are being uh, are seeing a decline in followers. KCBS as well as sports reports that physicians, health experts have to say what they have to say, or are they leaving the site under the new ownership? With Twitter in changeover mode, now with Elon Musk at the helm, many physicians and health experts are weighing whether or not to stay on board the social media site. Dr. Peter Chin Hong of UCSF says as a media source, Twitter has been invaluable throughout COVID. And during COVID, we've used Twitter for so much good. It, you know, at a time when the CDC was silent, we were able to share information, get best practices from each other when we didn't have a lot of diagnostic tests. There's a reach with Twitter that no other media platform provides, and it's been helpful for institutions of integrity to spread truth, facts, and good information. And I think we really probably saved a lot of people's lives by all this. We translated, for example, uh, some of what we were doing at UCSF into 14 different languages. It was really uh, seen by people all over the world. For now, Dr. Chin Hong says he's staying on Twitter and will stand up to misinformation and disinformation. Alice Wirtz, KCBS. Three small earthquakes measuring 2.2 and 2.3 were recorded yesterday afternoon in El Cerrito.